Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry. A recent study published in the Age and Aging Journal found that older adults in residential care who were given additional dietary protein and calcium experienced a significant drop in the number of fractures and falls. To discuss bone health and ways to mitigate these issues as we get older, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined on the podcast in studio by Professor Francis Zachary, geriatrician at Bowmount Hospital. Francis, welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good, yes. Thanks for the chance to come and talk about... Uh all things bone. We love chatting all things bone and wellness <laughs> and aging on the show. We know as a society that we age quite poorly in Ireland as we get weaker, as we get older, people that are at higher risk of falls, trips, hazards. And that's a real crucial component to healthy aging, isn't it? Avoiding those things. It is. I wouldn't say we age poorly. We actually are doing extremely well in Ireland. We have one of the highest life expectancies in Europe, which is really impressive and something we should all be very proud of. Um, But the one thing that is of concern, well, I shouldn't say concern. One thing to be celebrated is we have a huge rise in the older population. And I think it's useful just to look at the sheer numbers of people getting older in Ireland. And the census, which was conducted 2016 versus, excuse me, last year. In that period of time, there was an 8% rise in the population in Ireland. In the over 65-year-olds, that rise was 22%. Whereas across Europe, it was 10%. And in the 75-year-olds and upwards, we had a 28% rise. Across Europe, 3.5%. So we are actually going to have a vastly bigger population of older people. And if everybody ages in a really healthy manner, that's fantastic. Something to be celebrated. But with that, we really need to think very carefully about how it's going to impact on our health systems and on all these people's well-being. And falls and fractures, which is something that I feel quite strongly about, are a real threat to healthy ageing because they're so common and fractures are something that just rob people of their independence and they're often the reason why people end up going into nursing homes. They've had a series of falls. So this study uh, was of interest to me as well because it is a study in nursing home residents in Australia I think there were over just over 7,000 residents in the study in this study and they gave half of them an extra portion or two of dairy products every day versus the others continued with their usual diet. Now older people's appetite goes down quite a lot as we age. They just don't eat to the same degree often because they don't spend expend the same energy. But you do actually need more protein and more calcium as you're older to keep your bones and your muscles strong. Anyway, in a nutshell, the study was over two years. They had about 60 different residential homes. Half of the homes had the extra dairy, half did not. They managed to sustain that extra intake, and after the two-year period, they evaluated the the two different groups. There was a third of a, a fall in the number of fractures in the homes who had the extra dairy by a third, and an 11% fall in the number, uh, drop in the number of falls. I was just Double about fall to word there. very sarcastic comments <laughs> there about, you know, a fall in the number of people who fell, yeah. So the study recently published showed that it was a cost-effective strategy. Yeah. The actual original study was in the British Me- Medical Journal just over two years ago. So this was a follow-on just showing that this simple strategy of giving extra portions of dairy, uh, things like skim milk powder, extra cheese, extra yogurt that contain high protein, high calcium, was really effective for reducing the risk of falls and fractures and here in Ireland with such a large anticipated rise in our aging population in years ahead if the trend continues it's already grown hugely we need to really think about healthy aging and how to preserve it and we want to reduce falls and fractures at a population level and that's why that study was was of interest um, because I think it does have Uh, implications for all older people. Okay, the study was conducted in those in nursing homes, but there's no reason why it should be any different. Similarly, Australia, it's not hugely different population type to our own. And let's chat bone health. (coughs) So bone health as we get older, we strengthen it in our in our in our 20s and early 30s and then mid 30s onwards, it begins to exactly yes. I mean, most of our bone density is laid down in our childhood and our teenage years there's a little bit of wiggle room mid-20s late 20s and after that it sort of stays on a plateau gradually declines and when women reach the menopause there's a major drop because of the hormones Um, and so that is a really 
risky. T- it's not a hugely risky time. It's it, that's when fractures start to really become more apparent. Teenage kids will have lots of fractures, especially boys. There's a big peak in teenage years of fractures, then it dips. And then after the menopause in women and towards the 70s in men, that's when the rise really becomes apparent. So we have to just firstly be aware of it and secondly, do all we can to try and preserve our bone density and reduce fracture risk. So you need more protein as you age in your diet. You need more calcium, and that's to help with your muscle strength and your bone density. Because if you have low bone density, the first thing you often know about it is a fracture, and that's what... That was my question. My next question was, people listening in, how will they know? Like, is there a family history association, or is it when you have the fracture, that's when you find out? Well, it shouldn't be, but it is often. It's often the first people find out is that they have had a fracture. They've had a trip in the street, they broke their wrist, they think nothing of it. Um, they might go and get checked out for their bone density at that point. Um, and that's when they a might... Dexa? A DEXA yeah. scan, yes. Um, but it's not all about a DEXA scan, actually, and that's quite an important point because, ironically, most people who fracture, if you if you go on a DEXA reading, you, gen- you tend to get a result that will tell you you have either normal bone density or you have what's called osteopenia, mm-hmm. which is halfway or you have osteoporosis. But it's really, it, it's it's not as simple as that at all. Because having low bone density, having osteoporosis or osteopenia, they certainly put your fracture risk up hugely. But there are other things that do. If your mother broke her hip or your father broke their hip, that's actually a really strong risk factor for you doing the same. Okay. If you didn't do much childhood exercise, if you didn't lay down bone density when you were young and in your teenage years, if you had a bad diet, if you had eating disorders, these people are also more at risk. But that's generally because they don't form their bone density um, early on. Um, and they don't reach their peak bone mass. So uh, these things are important in, in your 20s. So there are other factors as well. Alcohol, excess alcohol plays havoc with bones. Smoking, these are risk factors you can actually do something about. Weight-bearing exercises. So these are all the things that determine a person's risk of having a fracture. So when people break bones, if they go on to have bone density scans, Actually, not all of them will have osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. So even still, there are benefits to being screened and going on to treatment at that point because osteoporosis and osteopenia, they are treatable conditions and there are medications and things that can be done to reduce your risk of having another fracture. So that's really critical. You might think you've just had a minor fracture, you just had a wrist fracture, you tripped in the street. That is, as there was a campaign by the International Osteoporosis Foundation, and they call it, this, uh, their slogan was, this could be your lucky break, because um, they had a picture of a woman with a plaster cast on her arm. Um, in other words, this is the warning fracture that might prevent you going on to have a much worse fracture, for example, a hip fracture. Um, or vertebral fractures, which are exceedingly painful and actually can reduce your life expectancy. And it's fair to say strength and balance are really important components. <clears throat> and even if you had a very sedentary uh, teenage years or sedentary in your 20s, as lots of people may have been, it's never too late Absolutely. to be stronger and to try and get, you know, to, to do weight bearing exercise, which, you know, Irish people generally, they're afraid of it in some regards, but it's, it is really important for your bone strength. Absolutely. I've talked really only about the bone density um, and how if you haven't exercised in your youth, you might have reduced bone mass. But there are very good clinical studies out there showing that regular weight bearing exercise, that's brisk walking a few times a week, will improve your bone density. But the other huge benefit from exercise is exercise will reduce your risk of falls. Now, the right kind of exercise, it's not just going out uh, brisk walking. There are a whole set of exercises for strength and balance, Mm -hmm. and they have been looked at in a lot of studies, and they really do reduce your chance of falls. So things that work on balance would be things, there's, there's a particular set of exercises that our physiotherapists would give called otago, there are Tai Chi and Pilates. Mm-hmm. They're exercises that focus in on balance, and they've been shown to have benefits in people who are on the lower end of, fa- of uh, the lower risk of, of falls. But they're still very beneficial. So it's about mixing up the type of exercise you do, improving your bone density with weight bearing exercise, improving your strength 
with training, conditioning and improving your balance with specific balance exercises. So we've seen a big growth in classes all around Ireland of these classes for older people mm -hmm. specifically. And we'd really encourage everyone to just seek these out. There's a social prescribing service run by the HSE yep. that also uh, feeds into And it's never classes. too late. I, uh, I mean, people Absolutely all the time, not. like, oh, I'm 70. I can't make any, you know, I can't improve. Nonsense. You, every little bit you do will reduce your risk of trips and falls. Absolutely. And these studies that I'm talking about where they've uh, in brought people into clinical studies, most of those studies were in people aged over 70 where they were given exercise programs or not, and they really do reduce the risk of falls. One danger with when somebody falls or has a fracture, what happens is they start to become nervous. They start mm -hmm. to become fearful. And the next thing is they say, OK, if I don't walk, I won't fall. And they stop exercising. And that just loses muscle strength and you're in a downward spiral and you become more dependent. That's a very difficult thing to conquer. Mm -hmm. fear of falling we see it all the time but with the right coaching and the right persistence you can get over it so I think if you're somebody who's really afraid of falling you know you should really be seeking out even getting your GP to refer you maybe to a physiotherapist starting with a gentle exercise program but it's it's so important to keep active and keep your muscles in check and of course, resistance training has a huge role to play within that too. So lifting, you know, weight bearing exercise, obviously, with in terms of walking, but also lifting weights, whether it's your own body weight of, you know, a squat or a lunge or something like that. Yeah, I mean, osteoporosis is so prevalent as people get older. And we, I think weight, exercise like that, if you're older and if you have osteoporosis or you're worried about having it, I'd be just careful with diving into exercise where you're really doing weightlifting. Because if you have vertebral osteoporosis, you can actually have a fracture with mm -hmm. very low impact. Um, and there are techniques that you should be careful about bending and turning and twisting. And I think that's really important. So chatting to a physio first is a good idea. Definitely, yeah. yes. And getting kind of a, a body mechanics assessment or something yeah, along the lines of that. Uh, because yeah, because it's important to bend properly, turn properly, lift properly if, you, um, if you're at risk of osteoporosis. You may not even know it, but I think you've just got to be a little bit more careful about the resistance exercises. I was reading something on the way up uh, on the train, uh, knowing that you were coming in today. And I said, I'm going to put that I'm going to put, ask that question and it was that if you can get up out of the chair your chair at home without using your hands it's a really good test of how you're going to age in terms of your st physical strength and I wanted to put that to you yeah that's called a sit to stand five times sit to stand can you stand up from your chair five times without using your arms if you can't you are at a higher risk of a hip fracture in the future okay it's 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 that specific link now uh, i mean there are many people who can't of course they're not all going to go and break their hip but it's just a measure of the whole it's a good test of core strength of having to be able to your proximal muscles the ones up near your hips to get you up in the first place your balance to stay standing so it's a useful simple test another one we do is get we get people to get up out of a chair walk three meters turn around and come back and it's not rocket science but if it takes you longer than 12 or 15 seconds to do that you're at higher risk of falling okay but these are very useful tests if you love have this. very large Our listeners populations will love this I, I tried that test with it with a family member oh about three months ago they couldn't do it and they're yeah. young, they're in their 60s, and they couldn't do mm. it. I was like, wow. Because I take that for granted. I just yes, get up and out. down, of course. So, you know, it's just what, what you do. So, folks, listening in, try that one at home this evening. Uh, when everyone's sitting down watching TV, no hands up and down, out of the chair five times and see who can do it and who can't do it. And I think you might just be surprised at who can't do it. And it might give them the little bit of the kick they need to go and do a bit more exercise uh, and a bit more weight-bearing movement. Um, chat to me about the the link between falls and mortality then. We've got some scary stats around that, haven't we? Well, in terms of a fall, because they're so common, if you ask older people if they've had a fall in the last year, about one in three people aged over 65 <clears throat> and one in two over 75 will have had a fall in the previous year. But most of them go unnoticed and unreported. But that's the actual number. A fall is generally the leading reason somebody ends up going into a nursing home, into long-term care. Falls and injuries are a huge problem. 
And uh, in Ireland, there are 30,000 fractures a year, at least, probably way more. And those numbers are rising. um, As we get older. They definitely are. And as we have more people getting older, we're going to see a much higher number. So falls are (coughs) really everyone's business because of the sheer, the the cost of the person. It's not Mm -hmm. just about fractures, it's injuries all over. It's the loss of confidence, the fear of falling. And if somebody needs nursing home placement, if even if they don't, if they stay at home, afraid to move, they now need someone caring for them. So falls are a huge, huge problem that we the have to be... Financial impact on the hospital financial system, the, I hate to see, is huge. It's enormous. We would not be able to cope because even for those who aren't hospitalised, people who fall often now need home care mm-hmm. because they're not as active, they're afraid to move. So it's got health mental health, uh, physical health, uh, you know, social, financial implications across the board. So it, they are a huge, huge issue and fractures being one, the most common consequence, uh, uh, the common injury from falls. And we really can't cope as a health system with with more fractures than we, we currently do in Ireland. At least 30,000 is more than enough. So we, we, we know the link from the study between dairy, calcium and bone health, very established black and white, which is great. Does that concern you then in terms of the way society uh, has been in the last, say, 10, 20 years in terms of, you know, um, vegan diets or all of the nut milks that people will use instead of normal milk, the non-dairy? Those milks contain a good quantity of calcium okay. as well. So I think if you are, and of course we know and a lot of people are concerned about the dairy industry and the impact on the climate and the CO2 emissions from cows and all that. Um, And the study that was just done was done specifically on dairy products. In a health service, we have to be careful with, you know, what we spend our money on. We have to show cost effectiveness and value for money. The study that was talked about there showed that this dietary intervention was extremely cheap and had huge benefits. There isn't the same calibre of a study out there on vegetarian sources of the protein and calcium. And we know that there are lots of foods that contain them and they may well have the same effect. But as a medic and, you know, we have to go with the science. And until we see that same trial, I think for older people, I'm just quoting the evidence of this paper that showed that this trial was really beneficial of just taking some extra dairy products. Some foods, veg, vegetarian foods, make, you know, the green vegetables, for example, are a great source of calcium, less so of protein, but you have to consume higher quantities of them in general. And older people, their appetite is not the best. So you actually have to be clever about how you're going to get the extra dairy product, or extra calcium protein in without actually overfilling them with some, you know, give them one yogurt or something and they won't eat anymore. So you've got to be clever about it. And if you're going to fill people with lots of other foods that don't quite contain as much calcium, then you might decrease their overall intake. And there's a, so, sim- a simple way for protein then presumably is aiming for some protein with each meal or certainly two out of the three main meals per day to so have a protein source with that. Yeah, I mean, I, like vegetarians are extremely healthy and we know that there are other studies that will show you that, uh, you know, a low salt, predominantly fruit and veg diet is very good to bring your blood pressure down. So it's about getting the balance right. But if you're going to just decide to do that, I think it's very important for teenagers Uh, I would say that because their bone density is still forming. So they should really think carefully about how they're going to get enough calcium protein before their bone density is fixed. As older adults, similarly, it does apply. Um, And even more so as we get older. You've really, you have to be sure you're going to get your due quantity of protein and your due quantity of calcium and all the other micronutrients across the board. And while it might be good for certain things um, to you know, to go onto a vegetarian diet like less red meat is, you know, certainly, you know, has health benefits. You just need to really put good thought into into the content and not to compromise it because it really will impact your muscle strength, your falls risk um, and your bone density. And do we have and or do we know a number for adults as they get older in terms of is there is it one gram of protein per kilo body weight or that's yes uh, that's right whereas actually it's less for younger adults that's the recommendation it's okay. about 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7 you know so as you get older because there's something called sarcopenias which is where the muscle fibers just don't last as long and uh, you know you really need that extra protein to maintain and to build muscle. For calcium, it's about a gram a day, but even more for older people, we'd say about 1.2, 1.3 grams. So they have high requirements and most aren't meeting it at all. 
Um, so more well, protein as you get older, not less. And of course, for people yes. listening in, just in case you are confused, your protein-based uh, foods will be your meat, fish, eggs, milk, yogurts, cheese, a pretty best one or two, corn yes. along the way. Things like nuts contain a yeah. lot of protein. Uh, if you're worried about weight, nuts have a huge, you know, you'd have to eat an awful lot of nuts to get the same protein and uh, calcium, for example, as you might from a dairy source. Um, but yeah, they, they would be sources. And if you're going to have a vegan diet or vegetarian diet as you're older, just to think carefully and even to seek maybe advice from your GP or a dietitian if you're referred to one or able to access one, um, just for advice on that, to make sure you're not losing out because you really want to preserve so it, your it's early intervention health. that if you have a concern, go chat to your GP, go and talk to them and the GP will, you know, they will they will assess you and they'll give you the, the, the personalised recommendations. But roughly we're talking about one gram per kilo body weight in terms of protein yes. and about one and a half. About 1.3 for uh, grams of calcium, calcium a day is day. the general recommendation yeah. for older people. And I would say if you've ever had what you think is a, a mild minor fracture or even you've had a few falls even if you think they're only accidental trips and they're all explained, you should be seeking um, advice because there are really are things you can do to reduce your chance of future fractures and future falls, even if you think it's just something minor. Francis, I've really enjoyed catching up with you. It's been great. It's great stats. Like, you know, it's, and that's why we love bringing in experts. We can hear from them. We can get the latest up-to-date stats, trends, all that lovely stuff. But a key messaging around health is always important, which is as you get older, more protein, a bit more calcium, you're stronger, weight-bearing exercise. Everyone listening in your homework between this week and next week is to try that chair test up and down five times, no hands whatsoever. If you can't do that, go into your GP and have a good chat with them. Don't try it on your own if there's nobody round and you're off balance. That's Very important. Only, make uh, sure that you're yeah. make sure that you're in a, a safe environment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Professor Dockery, thank you so much for coming in and joining us on the show today. Folks, that's it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry. You know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Instagram, realhealth at independent.ie. We'll see you next week for more Real Health. Slonga full. <laughs>